G'day guys, the Samsung S21 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Astrophotography, which one's better? Let's find out. Today we are talking about the Samsung S21 Ultra, the flagship, versus the iPhone 12 Pro Max in astrophotography mode or in low light mode. Basically, we're gonna shoot the stars with this sucker. There are lots of reviews all over YouTube all about how this camera can do this and this camera can do this, but no one's really saying which one's good for stars. In this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. If you're new here, I do two videos each and every week all about small sensor photography, usually low light photography. So everything I'm talking about today is in the description down below. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and you see what I do each and every week. If you have subscribed, you're a bloody legend. So a couple of months ago, I did a video, I'll link it up here, all about the iPhone 12 Pro Max and how you shoot stars, astrophotography, with this phone. And it was actually a, quite a successful video. People got a lot out of it and you were able to see what this flagship could do from the Apple camp. Then, when the S21 came out, I was able to get my hands on one and I did exactly the same sort of video with the S21, this sucker right here. A lot of you guys are saying, well, which one's better? You didn't shoot them side by side, which one's better? So today, what we're going to do, well, tomorrow morning when it's pretty cold and got to dodge the moon and try and get the Milky Way before the sun comes up, we've only got a small window at this time of year. I'm gonna sit these two on this little rig that I've got made up and I'll shoot them both at the same time to capture some stars. Then I'll bring them inside, put them in Lightroom, edit both of them, all the photos that I take in the morning, and I'll show you guys which one has got the most potential for astrophotography. Stick around. All right, we're about four o'clock in the morning. That moon's almost gone. And I'll tell you what, it's bloody freezing. It's summer for crying out loud, and I'm bloody freezing. The main thing I don't like about the iPhone um, doing this sort of thing at night is that my face detection just doesn't work because it's too bloody dark and it's a bit of a pain. But you got the back up there with the, the pin number, so that's all good. So on the Samsung, we're just going to go into more, go into pro mode, we'll go to 30 seconds, ISO 3200, manual focus up to infinity. What I've done with that is that I found that with infinity focus on this Samsung is that it does get the stars nice and pin sharp. And 4000 white balance on the iPhone will go into night mode, go straight down to 30 seconds. We have no option here for doing anything really manually. So we'll just touch on one of the stars like that shutter button shutter button and we wait 30 seconds if the pixel was here we'd be waiting a bloody long time because uh, that's four minutes but these two 30 seconds each so this is a pretty good comparison after seeing what i've seen so far i suspect the samsung's going to do a better job don't know not 100 percent, but i suspect that's going to be the case i'll take this photo and then what i'll do i'll turn both of these phones on to RAW and we'll shoot both these same photos in RAW because that'll make a bit of a difference with especially with the iPhone. So to turn RAW on with the Samsung we go into the gear icon whilst we're in the camera and we'll scroll down to format and advanced options and in there we'll just hit the button for RAW copy so it'll take a, a JPEG file and it'll also take a RAW file. For the iPhone we just go into the camera as long as you're on the iPhone 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max, then you've got the option for Pro Raw. And as long as you've got a later firmware, I think it's 14.3, um, which is about a month old, I guess now. Once it's on, it's enabled. Once you're in the camera app, just touch on Raw, so it's enabled, and that's it. So we'll try these two photos again. And here goes the Samsung. So both of those are taking photos now. We'll come back in about 20 seconds. The reason I'm shooting RAW now is that, well one, on the iPhone, it handles the noise a damn sight better shooting RAW. Well, both these phones are finished now, and I can see the galactic core rising just above the horizon on both of them. They both look pretty bloody good. We'll get these onto the computer and we'll see how good they are. So if anything can go wrong, it'll go wrong. The moon was out. We only had 
maybe half an hour to an hour between the moon going down and the sun coming up. So it was a very fine window there, so it was pushed a little bit. I managed to get four lots of photos. First set was with the moon there, and it was, it's almost a full moon. I think um, two days time will be a full moon. Um, so the moon was quite bright. The first set of photos is both a JPEG and a HEIC from the iPhone. And I think the iPhone did a better job in these two here. The Samsung was just blown out. It was way so it was way too bright. Um, and because I do so much on this channel with phones and not too much with manual settings on phones, this dickhead just should have decreased the shutter speed and it probably would have been just fine. So I wouldn't take too much attention, pay too much attention to that first set of photos. It was, um, I think we could have made the Samsung better. It was only when I got it in front of the computer and I went, idiot, you could have fixed that. So the second set of photos, uh, and all the photos from here on in, are all raw files. What I did notice though, and I've not noticed this before and I can't believe I haven't, is the metadata that's on all the iPhone photos. These are all 30 second photos, and when I look at the metadata in Lightroom of those images, just like I do for the Pixel phones, for example, on the Pixel, you look at it and you can see it's 16 seconds long, even though it shoots for four minutes, so we know it stacks it. iPhone, we shoot for 30 seconds, the shutter speed, on some photos it's two seconds, and on other photos it's three seconds. What does that tell you? I think the iPhone stacks it as well. It just doesn't do it as good, nearly as good, as what the Pixel does. So anyway, back to these photos. The second photo that we're looking at here, the second set, these are raw photos, still a little bit of light pollution from the moon. It was almost gone, and you can see there, we've been able to get the details out of the two photos, and you can see some galactic core um, detail through both of these photos. The thing to look at from this photo on, is the galactic core and the detail that's in the galactic core between the Samsung and the iPhone. The galactic core in the Samsung is just amazing. The detail that's in that, I just can't get over that's coming from a bloody phone. It looks like it's come from an SLR camera. It just does. It's amazing. I've always been impressed with what the iPhone does. I've been more impressed with what the iPhone 12 Pro Max does. When you put these two against each other, oh, my opinion is the Samsung has it. What do you guys think? Let's look at the third photo. Third photo here is where it really comes to shine. So the little bit of foreground element, and there's a little bit of foreground element in both of these next lot of photos. The first one here is a cattle crush, like for on our farm, and there's a little bit of metal work in the front there, and it was about a meter away from the camera. The stars in the background, so we're getting the foreground in focus and the background in focus, the stars in focus. It's pretty impressive that the Samsung has been able to do that, and look at the detail of that galactic core. That's amazing, I think it's amazing. And then with the iPhone, the detail in the galactic core, it's what we've come to expect from the iPhone. It works, it just doesn't do as good as what the Samsung does, in my opinion. Let's look at the fourth photo. The fourth photo here is a bit tricky because the light that's above this dead tree actually comes from my house. And I had the, the back porch light on and, and it's about 80 meters away and it's not a very bright light, but the detail that's been picked up in the top branches there um, that's pretty cool with both those photos. So we've got a really dynamic range in this photo. So it's really bright parts in the top of those trees, dark sky, dark foreground, and the dynamic range is being picked up there with the Samsung. I personally think it's better than the iPhone. So there you go. That's my thoughts on it. I think that the Samsung does a damn sight better job with astrophotography than what the iPhone does, even shooting raw. A lot of you guys have asked me, is it better? Well, now you know, you can make up your own mind. If you want to look at these photos yourself, um, head over to phonephotoschool.com.au, look under the review tab there and there will be a review. This video will be there as well. And you can download the edited files that I've just shown you here from that website. So a lot of you guys have asked me, am I going to keep doing iPhone videos on this channel? Well, of course I am. There's a lot of you guys that do it. Um, the iPhone is just an incredible camera. I personally think it's an incredible camera. Um, but this one certainly seems like it's better for astrophotography. What I'm going to do next is put the Samsung S21 Ultra up against what is universally known as the, the astrophotography phone, that is the Pixel. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll see that next week. Catch you later guys.